What is creativity? A lot of people have asked that question. I bet you're asking that question because you're watching this right now. I've also heard a lot of answers, but I haven't heard anybody give the answer quite the same way that I have it. So, I'm Michael Gilbo. I've been a professional in music and theater for over 25 years, both commercially and in higher education. So, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So, do you think you're creative? Do you think I would think you're creative? Well, find out after this. Welcome to Creativity Control. I'm Michael Gilbo, and I am here to guide you through all issues regarding creativity, especially in the realms of practice, purpose, productivity, and promotion. Because I think you'll agree, all of these areas, they just do not cover enough in school. So I am really glad you chose to be here today, because in getting the information from this show, it's going to put you so far ahead of everybody else in the game. All right, so today's issue that we're going to unpack is what is creativity? Okay, but before I tell you what I think it is, I'd love to hear what you think it is. So why don't you take a moment and uh, put it in the comments down below. Oh, and while you're looking down there, hit the subscribe button. Hit the ring the bell so that uh, you don't miss a single episode. All right, go on. I'll wait. Tell us what you think creativity is. Got it? All right. So now I'm going to tell you what I think creativity is, and I am going to go to the etymology of the word to create and say that creativity is when you make something that wasn't there before for you. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. Creativity is when you make something that wasn't there before for you. And those last two words are kind of the thing that I am really stating is important. Because nobody else can really know what is creative except for you. All right? Because creativity is finding different elements and combining them to create something new. It's using leaps of reasoning to stumble across a new solution. It is from something as wonderfully artistic as a new painting or writing a new song or creating a new role. But it's also the mundane. It is coming up with a way to get to work five minutes faster. It is uh, coming up with a new way to file the papers in your office that people can get at. It is a different way to store the groceries on your shelves. Okay, it really is. If it is new to you, if it's something you're having to process and reason and use your, cur and use your curiosity to figure out, you're being creative. And that's the point. We really want you to be creative everywhere. All right. Um, and again, the to you is important because it is absolutely possible that that solution to get to work somebody else has thought of. But if they didn't tell you, it's new to you. Even as extreme to the fact that if you haven't been listening to any music, watching anything, and you're a songwriter, and somehow you write a song that is the exact same song as the new Lady Gaga <laughs> song, okay? Other people might scoff, but if you know that you came up with it out of nowhere, you're being creative. All right? So that gets me to another definition and what other people think. And uh, one book I highly recommend, I'm going to get out here, is uh, The Neuroscience of Creativity. Uh, it's by Anna Abraham, really outstanding book. And she's kind of synthesized what a lot of other people think of as creativity. And um, she basically boils down with the solution that creativity is really defined by two things. Is it original and is it appropriate? So let's kind of take those two things apart. The originality, I think, is what we often think about as being associated with creativity. Um, but she's saying it must be totally new to the world. Uh, it has to be a new idea. It has to be a new thing, something that nobody else has seen before. All right. And the second part is, is it appropriate? She's saying, is it the right time? Uh, is the is the public ready to receive this new thing? Um, is it ready for a solution? And this one I find really interesting because um, this really takes the creator out of the equation. Um, 
according to her definition, if somebody were to invent a rocket ship before anybody even knew there was outer space, that that wouldn't be creative. And I think everyone could look at Leonardo da Vinci's old sketchbooks and realize that he created a whole lot of stuff that wasn't appropriate then, but uh, it was definitely creative. According to her statement, I think if a musician were to invent a totally new style of music that left everybody scratching their head and wondering what the heck it was, is not being creative. And uh, again, I, I think a lot of us would agree that that is creative. Um, so we need to separate this idea of creativity from her ideas of originality and appropriateness. Because what she is saying is I do think what a lot of us worry about. We do worry about our creativity. Is it original and is somebody going to find value in it? Okay, because that's ultimately all that her statements are, is it's defining value of creativity. So our first step as creative people is just to be creative. We always get stumped, stopped in our tracks. We get stalled in the middle of a project wondering if it's original, if people are going to like it. Sometimes we won't even start on a project afraid that it is not going to be original enough. And that has got to stop. We've got to press forward. And afterwards, after we have created our something, start to look at this idea of does it have value? Is it original? Because I guarantee if you do enough things, if you exercise your creative muscle enough, you are going to create something that is original and has value. Okay? It's as simple as that. You will, but you've got to exercise it. And you've got to do it over and over and over. If you're a songwriter, you can't expect your first song to be the brilliant number one hit that's going to make it for you. You can't necessarily expect that every song you write is going to be the thing. If you're creating over and over and over, you learn to just kind of distance yourself and let somebody else apply that idea of value. And you get better and better the more you exercise your muscle. And so you can also exercise that muscle in everyday things, like I just said about, you know, a new way to get to work, something. So I'm going to leave you an assignment to do right after you click stop on this video, because I'm going to do that all the time, because I want to give you something practical so you don't just file this away and forget about it. And that is, I want you to write down five things that you've done recently that well, now that you hear what I say about the mundane being creative, that you can now identify as creative, even though the rest of the world might not. And I'll give one more example. I hate mowing the lawn. I just don't like lawn work. I find it an exercise in futility, like Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the mountain. So every time I mow the lawn, I try to find a brand new way to section off the lawn, to do different diagonals, to do different cuts. And it's not earth shaking, but it keeps the creative side of my brain working just a little bit. And um, that's the point, is that it's not groundbreaking. Find those different ways that you can keep exercising your creativity in little bits. And then the idea of originality and value may not stop you in your tracks so much when you work on your novel, your song, your music, your painting, whatever it is that you do. All right, before you go, I would love it if you would take a moment and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you find out about future things, give us a like. It helps a lot. Also, tell a friend. And don't just tell a friend for me, because I would love to uh, spread the word as far and wide. I'll give you a clue. The best way you can improve things is to get together with a friend, go through the process together, and hold each other accountable. So don't just tell a friend for me. Tell a friend for you. All right, before I go, I'm going to give you a couple fun quotes that I have related to the subject. Um, I'm going to read them from my book so I don't get them wrong here. And uh, the first one is from my favorite musician ever, uh, Prince, said, To create something from nothing is one of the greatest feelings. I wish it upon everyone. It is heaven. All right. And then from a completely different source, Albert Einstein said, Creativity is intelligence having fun. All right. So until next time, I wish you to have fun with your creativity and uh, we'll see you next week.